Hi there, folks. Today we're taking a look at the uh, golden ratio. And uh, the golden ratio is just a special ratio that we come up with. Uh, if we take a look at something like this segment that I have drawn down here, segment AB, that's containing the point C, the golden ratio is when AC is the geometric mean of AB and BC. So, in other words, when the long segment is the geometric mean of the entire segment and the short segment. All right, so that's what forms the golden ratio. And when we do that, if we have uh, a piece, that longer piece that's the geometric mean between the whole thing and the, the smaller piece, the ratio that we get is approximately 1.618 to 1. All right, and it's kind of this unique relationship that comes up in a couple different places and that we use when we're constructing certain figures because what, what happens is the golden ratio uh, seems to be more pleasing to the human eye for some reason. So it's kind of this, this psychological thing that's built into our, uh, our brains. Uh, like when we look at uh, rectangles a little bit later, you'll find that when you draw a rectangle, you're drawing as close to the golden ratio as your, your brain can come up with because that is the most... Uh, satisfying and pleasing to the eye uh, when we look at these things. So that's the golden ratio. And again, when we look at that, the longer piece would be the 1.618 and the shorter piece would be the 1. And that's the ratio that they have with one another. Okay? For example, I've had something like this. It says, find the value of x. And really, uh, we could find this exactly by saying, okay, well, uh, if this is the golden ratio, and that's the assumption we're making here, then x would have to be the geometric mean between the smaller piece and the whole thing. Well, the smaller piece would be the 1, and the whole thing would be x plus 1. And then from here, we'd have to solve this thing. And when we solve this, uh, we, we would get x squared equals x plus 1. And then we'd subtract this, we'd get x squared plus x, sorry, minus x plus 1. Equals 0, uh, minus 1. Oh my goodness, Mr. Jansen, you're losing it. And then from here, in order to solve this thing, I can't solve by factoring. I could use something like completing the square, but that's a pain because we have a b value that's not 1. And so what we would end up doing is we'd end up using our uh, quadratic formula for this one. So we'd do the opposite of b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times a, which is 1, times c, which is a negative 1, all over 2a, which is also a 1. And what happens when we plug this into our calculator, if we do this twice, and we have to do it twice because of the plus or minus, we get two different answers, and one of those answers ends up being 1.618. And of course that's what it ends up being. If this is the golden ratio, then the small piece to the big piece should have a ratio of 1 to 1.618, and it's the exact same values we had up top. And so the point of doing this is, if we wanted to find this exactly every time, we're going to have to do our quadratic formula over and over again. So what we do instead is we just memorize this approximation and we use this and set up a ratio. So if I know this is the golden ratio, I say the golden ratio is 1.618 to 1. And then I say that equals the long piece compared to the small piece. And now I cross multiply and solve. Uh, to kind of shorten that process. So instead of having to derive this each time, we're just going to memorize that golden ratio and use it from there, okay? For example, when I look at something like this guy, now I'm going to change the values a little bit. Rather than doing x as the geometric mean and then having to do my, my quadratic formula, I just have this, this golden ratio memorized. And it's okay, the long piece, 1.618 compared to 1, should equal the long piece to the short piece, so x over the 5. And then from here, we're just going to cross multiply and solve this thing. So I get x equals, uh, and then I just punch this into my calculator. So I get 8.09. And that's going to be in centimeters. Okay. So we memorize that golden ratio and we, we use it to set up our proportion. This one, same kind of thing. I use the golden ratio, the 1.618 compared to 1. Again, that's the long piece compared to the short piece. This time the long piece is 10, the short piece is x. And now I cross multiply, I get 10 equals 1.618x. And now from here I just have to divide each side by the 1.68. 
And again, I just punch it, in, punch it into my calculator. And I get about a 6.81 is what we'll call it. And again, that's in centimeters. All right, so we're using that golden ratio to set up a proportion. The downside is we have to remember the golden ratio, unless you want to do the quadratic formula each time. And so with this one, uh, when we look at uh, the golden ratio, uh, we're going to talk about golden rectangles from here. And a golden rectangle is basically when the, the length and width, when the length to the width gives us the golden ratio. Okay, so if I compare the long side of the rectangle to the short side of the rectangle, and I get that ratio of 1.618 to 1, I'm dealing with a golden rectangle. And it's interesting, you know, if, if you uh, look at a group of rectangles and one of them is a golden rectangle and the other are, are not golden rectangles, uh, and you're asked the question, which one do you like the best, you know, nine times out of ten, uh, human beings will pick the one with the golden ratio. It's just the, the one that's the, the most visually appealing uh, in terms of, of the size of the rectangle. Uh, and so what happens here when we look at something like this guy, uh, if a room is a golden uh, rectangle with a length of 20 feet. We want to find the width. So I do the same thing. I'm just going to draw a picture here. So in terms of the length, I've got 20 feet. And uh, I want to convert the width uh, using the golden ratio. So when I compare this, keep in mind that if I have the golden ratio here um, and I compare it to any other rectangle that has a golden ratio, every golden rectangle will be similar. And that's the thing that you need to understand because their angles all match up. Their sides are all going to be proportional because they have the same ratio. They're using that golden ratio. So in other words, this triangle, uh, sorry, this rectangle that I've drawn down here is going to be similar to this one that I have up here. So what I do is I just use that same ratio, the 1.618 compared to 1, should equal on my rectangle the long side compared to the short side. And then from here, I'm able to go ahead and solve that for x. So I cross multiply 1.681 equals uh, x equals 20. And then I'm going to divide each side by the 1.618. Uh, and that's it. So we use that ratio and the fact that all golden rectangles are similar to come up with these values. So I find out that x should equal approximately 12.36. So if you have a room in the house that's about 20 feet by 12.36 uh, feet, it's probably your favorite room because it's the golden ratio. <laughs> okay. If I look at something like this guy, this one's interesting. Uh, given the following golden rectangle with square A, B, F, E, so I'm telling you that this piece in here is a square and that the whole rectangle is a golden rectangle, uh, I want to find... Uh, I want to conclude something about this smaller rectangle that's over here, all right? And just looking at it, you're probably guessing that that thing is a golden uh, rectangle uh, based on the ratios of the sides. So we just have to prove this. So we want to kind of show that this is true. And so what happens here, I know right now that each of these side pieces is four. So I have all these lengths. I know that this is also four because I'm dealing with a rectangle and a square. What I don't know is the length of this entire side right here. And knowing that will help me get what F, C, and E, D are going to be. All right. So what I'm going to do is the fact that this is a golden uh, rectangle, I can go ahead and set up a proportion. It's going to be similar to this guy, 1.618 compared to 1. And I'm just going to do long side compared to short side. This long side, BC, is the thing that I'm looking for. That's X. Compared to the short side of the overall rectangle, which is 4. And now I can solve this. And this is just a, a little bit of multiplication here. So I do the 1.618 times 4. And what I get is 6.472. And so what happens here, now I know that this entire side up here is 6.472, which means that the little piece FC and the little piece ED, uh, because I know that this is, and this is just segment addition, if I know that this piece right here is 4, I can then conclude that that piece is 2.472 with just a little bit of subtraction. So this guy is 2.472. And so what I want to do is I want to see if this is the golden ratio. So I compare the, the long side to the short side. 
And in this one, the long side would be the 4. The short side would be the 2.472. 472. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to plug this into my calculator. I missed the 4 this time. And I'm just going to plug this in and see if it gives me the golden ratio, see if it gives me 1.618, or at least close to that, since keep in mind that this thing is rounded off when we're talking about the golden ratio. This is just an approximation for it. And when I plug that into my calculator, I get 1.618.1229, and it keeps going, but very close and very accurate here. And that's why we have the, well, that's why we memorize the approximation for the golden ratio to three decimal places. So what it gives me is this guy over 1. And so what I can conclude is that uh, rectangle FECD is a golden rectangle. And the thing that's neat about this, if you, if you take any golden rectangle and you section off a, a uh, square uh, out of the inside of it. The rectangle that remains will be another golden rectangle. And I could keep doing that if I were to section off a square in here somewhere. Uh, just kind of taking a guess real quickly. If I were to section off a square in there, this little rectangle that's left is also a golden rectangle. And then if I sectioned off another square, this rectangle that's left is a golden rectangle. And I could keep splitting that into more and more squares and golden rectangles. And so it's this kind of unique relationship that's hap that, that happens here. Okay. The last thing we're going to look at in this lesson is just a kind of a, a neat thing. And uh, it deals with Fibonacci sequence. And this is going to relate back to the golden uh, ratio. But Fibonacci sequence is this thing that kind of appears in a lot of different places. Uh, it appears naturally and it appears in uh, lots of patterns when we're looking uh, at different math concepts. Fibonacci sequence just kind of pops up in, in random places. But Fibonacci sequence, uh, a guy named Fibonacci is who discovered this. And it's basically found by uh, the, the next term, the consecutive terms, are found by just adding the previous two terms together. All right, so if I take... Uh, one term and add the term before it, that gives me the next term. And so when we look at this, uh, right here is uh, Fibonacci sequence, and we're going to carry this out to a couple more values. But like right here, if I start with this term as a 1, if I add the term before it, which is nothing, 1 plus nothing gives me a 1. And then if I take this one and add the term before it, 1 plus 1 gives me a 2, which is the next term. And if I take this 2 and add the term before it, 2 plus 1 gives me a 3, which is my next term. And then 3 plus 2 gives me a 5. 5 plus 3 gives me an 8. And I could continue this pattern. 8 plus 5 gives me a 13. 13 plus 8 gives me a 21. 21 plus 13 gives me a 34. And I could keep going with this for, for quite some time. The next one would be a, a 55. And then an 89. All right, and that pattern continues. We can keep adding the term before it, and that gives us the next term. And so the interesting thing here, it says find the ratio of each term to the previous term. And so if I, if I start with the second term, because I can't start with the first one, but if I start with the second term, that's a 1. If I divide it by the term before it, 1 divided by 1 is a 1. And I could keep doing that with, uh, with the next term. So maybe I'll do the next term and say 2 and divide by the term before it, and it gives me a 2. And I'll do that with the next term. If I do uh, 3 divided by the term before it, which is a, a 2, that gives me a 1.5. And I'm just going to keep doing this for a little while and kind of see what I come up with. So the next one uh, looks like I've got a 5 divided by a 3. And when I do that, I get 1.666, and the 6 keeps repeating forever. I guess I, I can just denote that with a bar over it. Uh, the next one, it would be 8, and this time it would be divided by a 5. So that gives me a 1.6 exactly. The next one would be a 13 divided by an 8. And we're just going to plug this into the calculator to give us a decimal approximation. And that gives me a 1.625. Uh, the next one, I'll do one more here. kind of out of space, but hopefully this can uh, illuminate what's happening here. It's 21 divided by a 13. 
and that gives me a 1.615. And so what happens here is we go farther and farther along this thing and take one term divided by the term before it to find the ratio. What we notice is we're getting closer and closer and eventually will equal 1.618. Every time we, we increase and go to the next term and divide by the term before it, we get closer and closer to the golden ratio. And so if we could take Fibonacci's sequence out to an infinite number of terms, we should get the exact golden ratio. And the thing that's neat about the golden ratio is it's not necessary. it's, it's uh, kind of the, one of these never-ending, never-repeating decimals, which is why it can't be expressed truly as a fraction. But if we keep going with Fibonacci's sequence, we'll get closer and closer to it. So it's kind of this neat phenomenon that happens. Okay?